Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Home Automation at Home. This is a series where I show you guys how to build your own home automation and security systems so that you don't have to go out and buy the professional units that cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. If you're new to this series, please definitely go and check out the first few videos as they walk you through getting all of these different parts set up and having everything wired so that it all works correctly. So, in the last episode, I showed you guys how to get Home Assistant up and running on your Raspberry Pi, and we expanded upon our already started home monitoring physical unit here, and we added our light node into the system. So, in this episode, what I want to show you guys how to do is add a simple but effective security system to your setup. So, I've added over here three more lights, green, yellow, and red light, and those will be our status for our security system. And right now we only have one node that's going to be a detector node, that's something that will set off the security system, and that is our little door sensor here. So, this little unit that detects when a door is open or closed, that's the only unit that we have right now that's going to be hooked up to our security system. But in subsequent videos, we'll be adding motion detectors and even possibly an RFID reader so that you can enable and disable your system without having to use your phone or anything like that. So we don't have any new microcontrollers in this episode. We don't have any new nodes that we're adding to the system, but we are going to be modifying some existing nodes. So let's go and check out the code that we need to modify as well as the new code that we're going to add. We have a couple new scripts that we're going to add to the system to run all of the security. So let's go check that out. So let's here start off with the ESP conduit. So this is the node, the ESP8266 node that acts as a serial conduit to our Teensy or other Arduino type microcontroller. So we have all the same code that we had last time. Again, setting up your IP and SSID. We've done that for many episodes now. And we have our door, temp, and light topics. And we're going to be adding a security topic, a sec topic. And this is going to be under house slash sec status. So again, we make sure that we add our security topic to our list of subscriptions to our MQTT broker. And then there's not a whole lot new in our callback here. So this is when, whenever we receive a message from the broker on one of these topics. You can see we have our temperature topic, our door topic, our light topic. And now we're adding our security topic. And we have three states for our security system. We may be adding more in the future. But at least at the moment, we have disarmed, armed away, and triggered. And so whenever we get a topic that is equal to security topic, we check to see if the payload is disarmed, armed away, or triggered. And we match our byte to send to one of those three items, 0, 1, or 2. And then we send that along using S for the security header and then sending byte to send along with it. So there's one more change that we have to our callback here. And that's actually a fix that I made that came up in this program but hasn't shown its head in previous episodes. And the problem is that the payload that the callback sends is not null terminated by default. So if we go and when we go and create a string object from our payload, use, this used to be payload string equals cast as a character pointer payload. Now it's being set to payload fixed. That's because I'm actually creating a new character array called Payload Fixed, and we're mem copying. We're copying our original payload that doesn't have have a null termination into the Payload Fixed, and we're copying the length of that payload, and then we're taking our length point in our new payload and turning that into a null terminated character. That way when we create the string object, it will be created of the correct size and length of our original payload and will be null terminated. That way it doesn't interpret our string as being, for example, armed away 
plus a whole bunch of other characters that have nothing to do with Armed Away. They're just junk characters because the callback didn't null terminate its payload. So this is actually a problem, I think, in the MQTT client here. So yeah, those are the only changes in our ESP conduit here. That's pretty simple. The rest of the code I've gone through in previous videos, so if you're unclear what's happening here, definitely go and check those videos out. But otherwise, this is really the only change. And again, this little fix here is the other little change. So not too much different there. So taking a look at our Teensy code now, so this is, I'm using a Teensy, but you may use, you know, any other Arduino that you choose to use. And the changes that I've made to this to add our security system is I've created a few definitions for security off, armed, and triggered. And then I've created a few pin variables here for our off pin, armed pin, and triggered pin. So I declare those and I turn them into outputs. And by default, I set the off pin to high so that just upon startup, it's assumed that the system is disarmed. And then in our loop here, I added one more item here. I added S for security to check for good headers. If we have a good header, we have all the same code that we had before. And then at the bottom here, we have our handling of our security system packets. So this is if our header byte is equal to an S. We check to see whether our payload is security off, a zero, security armed, a one, or security triggered, a two. And based on those three items, it will flip the correct pins higher low to show us output on our LEDs. So again, there's not too much difference in here. That's all the difference that there is. A couple of macros here, pin definitions, pin modes, and then handling a security system packet. So pretty simple. So here we have the one brand new piece of code that we're going to be looking at today. And this is our security system Python script. So this is a script that I wrote to monitor and arm and disarm the security system. So rather than having a whole ESP or Arduino module dedicated to being our security system, we're actually just running it all through a Python script that will run on your Raspberry Pi or whatever other server you're using for your broker. So we include a few different libraries here. We have our MQTT library, and this script will actually also send us emails whenever there's a fault in the system, whenever something gets triggered. So we include the email library, and then we have a few variables here. We have a security enable status, so this just keeps track of whether the system is armed or not. And then we have the send email, which I have currently set to false. This just enables or disables actually sending out emails whenever there is a fault in the system. So when you're testing, you might, you might not want to have it send emails, so I have this set to false right now. And we have two topics that we're going to be dealing with mainly. The first is our status topic here, which just monitors whether or not the security system is on or not. So the enable topic is then the opposite of status topic. It's the topic that we send things to to enable or disable the security system. So down here at the bottom, I have our client startup here, and we have our various uh, methods that we call whenever there's a message or we connect, publish, subscribe. And then we tell our client to connect to localhost, because I'm assuming that you're going to be running this on the same server as the MQTT broker. And then we subscribe to our topic that we're going to watch for changes. So this is our enable topic. This is what we're going to be sending to this script to either turn on or disable the security system. And then, like I said, we only have one detector node. We will be adding more in the future. But right now it's just our door sensor, so slash house slash door one. And then a, another YouTube user pointed out to me that there is this MQTT loop forever function, which keeps the script alive, but doesn't require you to actually 
put in a separate loop. It just maintains looping and ma keeping the script open all the time. So now there's no more janky while loop that if you watched my previous videos may have seen me do. So this will keep it running forever. So I'm going to skip over the security alert method at the moment and we're going to go up to our on message method. So what, we, what we're doing in this method here is we're basically monitoring our top two items, monitor whether or not we want to enable or disable the system, and this bottom if statement here monitors whether a detector has been set off. So up here at the top we have if message is equal to enable topic and the payload is one, then we set the system to on and we publish to our status topic armed away. So now we've basically flipped the switch and the system is now recognizing and telling all the other units that the system is armed. And then we just print out security enabled as a little bit of debug. And then we do basically the exact opposite when the payload is zero. So to turn it on, the payload was one. To turn it off, the payload is zero. We set enable status to false and we publish to our status topic disarmed and we print out a little bit more debug. So that's enabling and disabling the system. So then we have this last if statement here which monitors just anything else that we're subscribed to. So if we get a message and it's not the enable topic, and it will be the detector nodes that hit this if statement here. So we check to see if the enable status is true. And if the payload is one, so whenever our detectors are set off, they send a payload of one. So if our payload is equal to one, we publish to our status topic that we've been triggered and we call our security alert function. So now taking a look at this function here, we take our security alert and we passed it the alert location. So that's technically it's the topic that the uh, detector is publishing to. So in this case, the only one that would happen would be slash house slash door one. So we take that as input and we print out that we've had a breach at this at whatever location. And then if send email is true, so remember back up at the top here, I have this send email. If it's set to true, it will send an email using this little setup here. So you, you give it a from address and a to address. So the very likely these will probably just be the same email email address. It'll just be automatically sending from your personal email address to your personal email address. But you may also have two separate addresses. I personally have a separate address just for my home home monitoring setup. So you have a from address and a to address. And then we form our header here for our email. So it's to and then our to address new line from, from address, new line, subject, and I call it home security breach is the subject for these emails. And then the message for our email is going to include our header, plus then we have inside our actual messages breach location, and then we put our alert location. So again, that's house slash, slash house slash door one and then a couple of new lines. So this is actually what creates the body of our email, and then the header contains the to, from, and subject lines. You probably do need your email credentials, so here you put your username and your password, and then this is where you have to actually set up your server here, but mine, I'm using Gmail, and I assume a lot of you will be using Gmail, so I left this in here. And we create a server, and we set it to SMTP lib, and we give it the, the SMTP server. And then this just handles sending the email. All these functions here just log in, you know, connect to the server, log in, and send the email, and then quit. So whenever we receive a security alert, this 
gets set off and it sends an email out and you get an email on your phone or your laptop or wherever you get emails from, it will send you an email. So this is really convenient. It isn't foolproof, but it does work really well and can definitely let you know what's going on in your house. So the last piece of this whole thing is to finally add it to Home Assistant. So here we have our configuration file from last time. And all I've done is added an alarm control panel and it's running off MQTT. And the state topic is this is our house slash security status. And the command topic is house slash security enable. So when we click on home assistant to enable our system, it will send a one or a zero out to security enable and it will constantly be monitoring house slash sex status to watch for updates to see whether it's currently armed, disarmed, or triggered. So that's our little control panel there. And then I've added it to our group of sensors. So I've got this last line here, alarm control panel dot security. And so this just puts it in our neat little panel of the rest of our sensors there. So there's not a whole lot that's new in this, just adding this little chunk here. So with all of the code out of the way, let's go and check it out and see how it all works. So now that we have all of the code out of the way, we can see that we have our security lights here. So we have green, yellow, and red. Green is disarmed, yellow is armed, and red is armed and triggered. So right now I have my little magnet on my door sensor and the security system is disarmed. So if I just do this, nothing's happening. And you can see even on the phone here that it's updating the door state. But let's go ahead and arm the system. So I'm going to flip it to arm away and you can see the light on the security set status has now gone to yellow and that indicates that the that the system is active and armed but not yet set off. And now let's open the door. Let's take this magnet away. Oh, you could see the door it went red and the security has been triggered. And now on the phone, we can even see that it's been triggered on the phone as well. So we can go back and we can disarm it and the light goes green again. And we can put our little magnet back in place. And yeah, so that's all that's happening. You know, we, have, we haven't done a whole lot that's very interesting today, but we have made our system a bit more secure. And... I'm not demonstrating the email part of it right now, but be assured that if you put in all your credentials, it will operate and send you emails whenever the system is set off. I've tested it out. It works on my system, so it should work on your system. So, yeah, I hope you like these videos. If you do, definitely subscribe to my channel and, and give a thumbs up to the video. And if you have any ideas for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments or shoot me a message on Twitter at It Kinda Works Inc. And I will see you guys next week with more additions to our system. Until then, take it easy guys.